We formed in 2007 yeah. after working together separately on an exhibition. EV stands for Edinburgh, where Becca lives, and Brussels, where I live. And we began as a company to work on interiors, and then after a research project into the history of the Scottish textile industry, part of which was creating some clothes, working with local companies, we decided to focus on being a fashion label. Yeah. And then that, an extension of that through the fashion, we would do more elaborate displays and continue the research. And this has just got more and more concentrated over the years until we come to the exhibition here, which is the most ambitious one we've done so far, I think. Yeah, for sure. This is our fourth collection, Jasper Ware. We've worked with companies that we've worked with since 2011, but we also have some new companies that we've worked with. The idea with the neoclassical tracksuit was we found the motifs in it in a mixture of places. I think this was from a kind of stucco and a kind of interior shop in Vienna. Absolutely, yeah. And then some of the images are again from Gilbert Adrian. He was a Hollywood costumer and designer active between like the 30s and the 50s. Did the costumes for The Wizard of Oz. And he worked a lot with um, the kind of neoclassical motifs that were very popular in the 1930s. And we look a lot at these kind of gorgeous Grecian neoclassical gowns made by people like Madame Grey or Gilbert Adrian, Madeleine Vionnet. And they're exquisite clothes, but they have no relation to our lives, the lives of our friends. We've got nowhere to wear them because yeah. we're working all the time, <laughs> so we thought, well, we'll apply them to something that people wear all the time, which mm. is a tracksuit. And mm. there's no reason why a tracksuit can't look polished and elegant, depending on how you wear it. And the principles that they make a neoclassical gown what it is, you, you use colour blocks, you bisect the body and uh, break up the body in certain ways, and you, you place the motifs. There's no reason why you can't do that with a tracksuit today, the way people did it in the 30s with couture. Mm. Well, with the faux shop, um, is, clothing is problematic to show. Textiles and fashion are problematic to show. We've used a mannequin um, previously, but she was an adolescent mannequin because the proportions are often stretched on the mannequin um, and our clothes never quite looked right. So on this occasion, we've dressed it like a gentleman outfitter. So we've tried to mimic that sort of style of a shop window. We uh, invited three window trimmers who have worked in the industry for about 35 years to help us recreate that look. We're really pleased with it. It's the best our clothes have looked. Our clothes lend to that flat display um, with a bit of activity in them because our clothes are, you know, very normal clothes to be worn, to be worn to work, uh, worn out, but not necessarily... Um, Catwalk. Yeah. And yeah. our clothes, would ne it would never make sense for us to have a catwalk presentation. So we feel so true. by having them in that kind of window, it, it helps kind of explain to the viewer the kind of clothes we want to make. We hope that that helps the customer kind of understand why we work with, you know, why we would make a skirt like this. Something very, very normal. Part of the exhibition here focused on the fashion ecology in the Soviet Union. It worked in such a dysfunctional way that many designers designed only in a representational way. We couldn't have it in the show that you only have the shop window and you can see our clothes, or here that you could kind of touch them, but you couldn't really have them. It's really important that also, even though they're sold in such a kind of minimal way we don't sell in shops, here you really can uh, leave with the thing that you've seen displayed so beautifully, which normally you can't do in a museum. You see something and you just go, but you can't try it on. And then you become the mannequin. The whole show is kind of about displaying mannequins, but we don't really like mannequins. We don't find <laughs> them useful. This is why we're so happy that artists have designed ones for our clothes, because everyone is made specifically for that garment. When uh, Becca and Lucy asked me to do Monica for the show to present their um, new collection, I was thinking about what, which sculpture I would like to dress. And then I came to this sculpture I made um, nearly 10 years ago um, because it's a um, vulnerable, naked sculpture and I like the idea to put clothes on to give it some shelter or to give it a, like, like a second skin. And uh, it's, it's, it's a personal tribute to one of my favorite sculptures from Wilhelm Lehmbruck. 
and he made in 1915 as a kind of a uh, war memorial. So it's called Der Gestürzte, a fallen, fallen figure. And I did it in my, in my own proportions. So it's kind, of a, it's kind of me fallen. And the original version is with the concrete plinth and of course without the clothes, more like kind of like a classical sculpture. And now for the show I wanted to bring it into the now or more into the, into the future. Also reacting on the, on the clothes. In the Greek meander pattern, I see some like relation to kind of mandelbrot forms, which I used, which I used here, the fractal forms, which is like the self similarity is like kind of repeating itself, and it's also like a kind of a picture for eternity. You know, it's like going on and on and meander, meander, and it's this is the same like the maybe the three D. Um, contemporary form of a, of a meander and you can kind of in, in the Mandelbrot fractals you can zoom in now it's a flat print but it's, it's done in the, in the computer program with a fractal algorithm and you can zoom into it like forever. Each artist that we invited had the, the opportunity to, to choose from previous collections, the Tele EB collections and as we've only done four, um, this was quite an easy process. But what was interesting is nobody chose the same garment. So Mark Camille chose the Ivan Lendl sky blue tracksuit, which completely suits his work. We really love, with, particularly with Mark Camille's piece, that he's mixed his own work in with Atelier's work, because we really enjoy when Atelier's clothes are worn with other designers or other uh, found objects. Now that they're here and we have the time to, to really spend some time with them, we're definitely interested in the way the artists we invited have done really nice contrast between quite kind of modern and techy materials like perspex or silicon, Marcus's digital print, and the way they've chosen to kind of pair that with the, the cotton, and silk. Yeah, we think this works really well. I particularly like Anna's because I don't think I've seen the outfit worn so well. I don't know whether the, the wearer is taking the clothes off or putting them on, but it doesn't matter. The delicacy of it with the, with the negligee and the skirt is, is perfect. It's the best it's ever looked. And for me, it chimes with the piece that I made in collaboration with Marcus Proshek, which is working with fragments from antique statues. As a starting point, we love the Venus de Milo because she has no arms. That makes her more modern and kind of beautiful in our sense of modernity or of modernism, where the fragment and the absence and spaces are key. And what it does is it gives the imagination space to fill in the gaps and make the most beautiful woman in the world rather than it being told to us.